Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to My Dad Says Audio. Today we're going to be looking at a fully restored and rebuilt Thorin's TD-124 and uh, the phono stage that it's feeding into, which is a, a, re, a clone Morant 7. So Dad, do you want to tell us a little bit more about the Thorin's? Yeah, the Thorin's I've done quite a bit of extensive work to. Uh, it's an original Mark I, which has a cast iron platter, which you'll see in a second. Um, I'll just pull it apart so you can have a bit of a look at it on the inside. And I'll move the outer platter. And now you can see the cast inner platter. And if I can, I'll just carefully get in here and I'll try and remove it. Okay, so there's, that's your cast iron platter. Platter weighs about 4.1 kilos, if my memory is correct. Now, I've done quite a bit of work to this. Uh, the motor's been rebuilt using Audio Salente uh, uh, phosphor bronze uh, bushes. Um, and so what you notice, actually, with it is that the motor gains a whole lot of torque it didn't have before because all the old oil in the original bushes dries up and then it creates quite a bit of friction which the motor then tries to overcome and never really does. Uh, you might notice it's got the Audio Salente um, idler wheel here. And if you've never seen one of these before, the main bearing is a real nice, nice bit of work. Have a look at this one. I'll just carefully bring it out. You can see there that that's a really nice bit of work. Um, I've changed the bushes on the motor, the rubber bushes on the motor, uh, the mushrooms, the mushrooms underneath the uh, the part that levels the turntable, um, and you might notice. The plinth, the plinth is from Moldavia. There's a guy there that makes really quite nice speaker boxes and uh, plinths, especially for things like uh, the, these Thorinses. And that plinth is really quite nice. And what tone yeah. arm are you using with it? Okay, it's a Michelle, it's a Michelle Techno arm. It's got that drilled arm tube. It's a little bit hard to see, maybe from there. If I lift it up, you can see the, the holes on it. And at the moment, I'm using a Nagoka 110 cartridge, which I think is pretty remarkable sounding. You know, I've quite a cartridge collection, but uh, for what is basically a budget cartridge, um, I'm actually quite impressed by how good it sounds. And what's what's the special uh, dampening you've got between the cartridge and the tone arm? You've got some. No, right. This is this is proprietary um, constrained layer damping. It's even quite hard to see. It's just a little bit looks it looks like aluminium foil, but it's not. There's a little bit more to it than that. Uh, it's to stop reflections because you've got a moving mass here which generates quite a quite a noticeable amount of energy which then goes up the cartridge body into the tone arm runs down the tone arm and depending on the counterweight and the sort of termination that you got it actually affects the sound uh, oh yeah the other thing I didn't point out is with this uh, so I've used quite a few Audio Salente bits and pieces. Uh, the thrust plate on the bottom of the bearing, you can actually almost just see it if you look in through there, is brass. If you look in there, you might be able to just see it. 
Yeah, you can see a little bit. Okay. Yeah, the bearing tolerance is so tight it actually it's kind of takes, air, it's takes airtight a while to, yeah to settle yeah to evacuate all the yeah. trapped air yeah the amusing thing is I think the first ones of these you'd have to go online and check but it was either 1956 57 or 58 I think it's 56 that's my guess that they started making these things. And what's the clamp, the, the record weight you've got? Where'd you well, get that? Well, I think I got that from eBay. And that's about... The whole platter assembly, as it comes standard, is about 4.1 kilos. Plus that, which is 1.1 kilos, it's about 5.2 kilos of rotational mass. The thing is, I, I've got a bit of a turntable collection, and this is just one of... Uh, five turntables that I've got, high-end turntables that I've got, and I'd consider this as good as any of the other ones that I've got. Okay. And you've got it. You've got it floating on a inner tube and well, paving I've got, slab. You'll see there's a paving slab. It's on a paving slab, which sits on uh, sits sits on an inner tube so it gives it a s substantial amount of isolation yeah. so do you want to tell us a little okay. bit about the phono stage phono stage is uh what's a sheer audio sheer audio m77 right it's a two box unit and essentially what it is is that's the actual circuit there which is, when you, when you compare it, it's exactly the same as the Marantz 7 phono stage schematic-wise. The difference is the power supply. On this unit, it's external. Um, I've totally rebuilt it. Uh, pretty much every cap, capacitor, every resistor. Uh, it's totally rebuilt. And I'm actually quite impressed by just how good Good the unit is. Once again, I've got it on a paving slab, which is floating, which is floating on an inner tube, which is inflated, which I find is very effective in reducing microphonics. Uh, for the, for those that are into this sort of thing, of all all the uh, coupling caps in here, uh, Solon tin foils, and all the electrolytics. A black gates. Um, all I can say it's a, I think it's a bit of a classic circuit to be quite honest and uh, it's sort of it's a bit hard to describe the sound it'd be really nice if you could play a record but unfortunately we would cop a copyright right strike over it so unfortunately that won't be happening. Um, so it's two box. The original Moran Seven, if I'm right, it was a pre phono in one box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a preamplifier plus uh, preamplifier plus the phono stage because phono back in that those days, of course, the phono stage um, was integral within the unit itself. Um, I like to think with this, with what I've done. With what I've done with the uh, phono stage, that it actually is, uh, it actually sounds, uh, I would suspect, sounds better than the original Marantz, to be quite honest. Oh, with a separate power supply? With a separate power supply, and it's... All the look, modern parts? Well, uh, the purists might say that, uh, that uh, you know, it's solid state, therefore it can't be... Um, comparable to Morant 7. Mind you, I think if you look at the Morant 7, they use a solidium rectifier, which is the start of solid state, in actual fact. Anyway, 
we thought you'd like to have a look at uh, look at this. All I can say is, uh, you know, uh, every time I listen to it, uh, it leaves a big smile on my face. So, you know, I get a lot of joy out of it. All right, people, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. We'll be back next week with another video. All right, take it easy. Bye.